In this video, we're going to use a tree diagram. Now, two identical cookie jars are in a cover. Jar A contains two chocolate chip and two peanut butter cookies, while jar B contains one chocolate chip cookie. We select the cookie at random. What is the probability that it is a chocolate chip cookie? Well, our first things first, we have our choice. We can choose jar A or jar B. Now, when you do that, there is a 50% chance, or 0.5, you can choose either jar A or jar B. That makes sense. Now, if you choose jar A, you have four different options. You have a chocolate chip and a chocolate chip, or a peanut butter and a peanut butter. Now, each of these has a 25% chance of happening. Now, that means to choose a chocolate chip cookie out of jar A, you'd have a 0.125 chance. Same with a peanut butter cookie. Those are your odds pulling a chocolate chip or peanut butter cookie out of jar A. Now, for jar B, your only option is a chocolate chip cookie. That is a 100% chance. So that will leave us with a 0.5 chance to pull a chocolate chip cookie out of jar B. That means the probability of pulling a chocolate chip cookie will be 0.125 plus 0.125 plus 0.5 which equals 0.75 or 75% chance. So at random, there's a 75% chance we're going to pull a chocolate chip cookie out of either of the two jars. Now, when we talk about conditional probability, the probability of drawing a chocolate chip cookie in example 7 is an example of conditional probability, since the cookie probability is dependent on the jar outcome. A convenient symbol to use with conditional probability is P of A given B, meaning the probability of event A given that event B occurs. In the cookie jars of example 7, the probability of a chocolate chip cookie given that you're choosing jar A, would be 2 out of 4. And the probability of a chocolate chip cookie, given that you choose jar B, would be 1. In the tree diagram, these are the probabilities along the branches that come out of the two jars, not the probabilities at the ends of the branches. The multiplication probability can be stated succinctly with, the, with this notation as follows. The probability of event A and B is going to be the probability of event A times the probability of event B given that you choose jar A. This is how we found the numbers at the ends of the branches. As our final example of probability problem, we will show how to use this formula in a different but equivalent form, sometimes called the conditional probability formula. Now, if the event B depends on the event A, then the probability of B given A will equal the probability of A and B together divided by the probability of A. Now, example A says, suppose we've drawn a cookie at random from one of the jars described in example 7. Given that it is a chocolate chip cookie, what's the probability that it came from jar A? So what we're doing here, it's going to be the probability of jar A given there was a chocolate chip cookie. So that means it's going to be the probability of jar A and the chocolate chip cookie divided by the probability of a chocolate chip cookie. Well, the nice thing was we already found the probability that it will be a chocolate chip cookie. So, the probability that it will be jar A times the probability of a chocolate chip cookie divided by the probability of a chocolate chip cookie, which we found in the previous example. 
So what really what we're going to have, half of a half would be 0.25 over 0 0.75. 0 0.25 over 0.75 would be one third. That is a probability that if we drew a chocolate chip cookie, the probability that it came from jar A would be one out of three, or about 0.33. Now again, remember your homework changed. It is 3 to 48 multiples of 3 and 51 to 56.